Um, so I'm here today to present um, our new Lasagna quantitative PCR test. Um, just wanted to give a bit of a review of Lasagna. Um, again, it's a bacteria, gram negative, uh, curved or sigmoid rod, which you can see um, here. It's an obligate intracellular pathogen. So like Mike mentioned, it will be in the epithelial cell. The main host species is the pig, but it can also be found in rodents, horses, um, primates. It's a ubiquitous pathogen, meaning it can be found worldwide. And it causes, as I mentioned, subclinical and clinical disease. Just kind of going through again another review of ileitis. Um, once the pig is infected, seven days post-infection, you'll have fecal shedding. Um, then you'll get seropositives uh, at 14 days, which just means the production or appearance of antibodies. Uh, clinical signs will appear at 16 days. And then you get the cell-mediated immunity starting about 14 days post-infection, and then either recovery or death at 28 days post-infection. And again, I've got some um, pictures here, and this is just a pig with a scour, diarrhea, and you'll see kind of this very loose um, stool, which is a great photo right before we eat, but there you go. So we are very excited at Barry and Greenheim about the health management HMC's development of this um, qPCR for Lasonia. It is the industry's first commercially available qPCR. Um, it is, right now, it's just for fecal samples. It's a great example of how at BI we have enteric leadership in knowledge and in vaccines. So your traditional qualitative PCR is just looking at the presence, yes or no, of Lasonia. But now the quantitative PCR will actually give you the bacterial concentration levels that are present of Lasonia in the fecal material. So the quantitative PCR at HMC, it uses the same methods that we're used to for PCR, but with more precise standards. Again, another way that we've made it easy is that at HMC they have perfected the qPCR, so it's able to adjust for inhibition. And inhibition is just, it will interfere with the amplification of the genetic material, so you're unable to read the PCR, you'll get a false positive or a false negative. So feed ingredients or other bacteria that are present in the fecal material can interfere with it. So by doing that, though, we've made our test highly accurate, highly reliable, and repeatable. So why is quantification of Lasonia important? And it's because in the literature you'll find that there's a direct correlation between shedding of Lasonia in the feces and severity of lesions or clinical signs in the pig. So just kind of going through that, I've got the quantification of Lasonia. So on the um, x-axis, I'll have the clinical presentation. And on the y, I've got the bacterial concentration of um, per gram of feces. And so I start here with a 10 to the 8 um, logs of feces, uh, grams of bacteria of feces. And these are non-vaccinated animals, and they're also non-treated. So when we... Uh, have a clinical pig, we know based on the literature that we are in a, at a 10 to the 8 log of bacteria present. And so with that, we'll see in the intestines on a necropsy that proliferation, the necrotic tissue, possibly a hemorrhagic presence. And then also you'll see this very loose uh, scour in the pigs. So then at a 10 to the 7 log, You'll have a pig that could be clinical, but they may not. But again, the picture may be just kind of a, a pig with looseness, uh, maybe not as loose as that first picture, but still it's not normal. Then when we get 10 to the 6, this is where you have a subclinical presentation, meaning we don't know that the pig is infected. They can appear completely normal, um, but this is where our impact is underestimated. So here, you know, looking at the other pigs, we can see that he's just a little bit smaller. We know it's affecting performance, but we just don't have any clinical presentation, so we miss those pigs. And then the covalescence, which is the recovery phase, and that could be this pig over here. I mean, looking at those pigs, can you pick out which one had ileitis? Probably not. And it's just that they've all been exposed, and the normal, you're comparing it to each other versus what a healthy pig should look like. So again, we're, we're losing performance here. So what these three mean, 
here, these two, we know we have a clinical picture. So we're going to go in as a veterinarian and we're going to necropsy. And most likely we will find these lesions present. But with the subclinical pig, I'm not picking those pigs. I'm missing those pigs. So I don't know if um, what um, economic losses are there. So how can this help? So with the disease will cause a decrease in your average daily gain and it'll cause an increase in your feed conversion, which that costs the producer money. And so that also means that as a veterinarian and a producer, you've got to go in and do a diagnostic workup. You've got to go in, maybe bleed some pigs. Um, look, you're looking for loose stool, do some necropsies. All of that leads to more questions and also a lot of time spent. So this QPCR that we've developed is really beneficial to the industry and to the producers. It's really going to change the way that we approach the disease itself. Because now we can actually identify the severity of Lawsonia present. So as I mentioned, if I go in and do a QPCR and I find that the logs are 10 to the 8, then I know what that pig will look like based on the literature and what I just presented. Also, now we have the ability to identify those subclinical pigs and what severity are they infected. It will also identify Lasonia throughout the year, help understand economic losses, and understand the disease pattern and status in your herd. And it provides us with a better immunity management tool. So what all this means is with the QPCR, we're now able to go in and do more anti-mortem testing and get a better idea of the severity of the disease in the herd. And I, I'm not doing more necropsies, I'm not costing the producer more money. Also, when you combine the QPCR with our vaccine, it plus our enteric leadership, we've made proven protection made easy. So, um, just again, the benefits of this test. It's just now allowing us to approach Lasonia by figuring out the severity of the disease. We can actually put a number to that and hopefully provide the producer with the economic losses, especially with the subclinical pig and help to show where we need to put in a monitoring program and also better placement of our vaccine. So I'd like to acknowledge the HMC, um, sorry, Kit Doolittle, Allison Spitz, and Wayne Chick. They were very instrumental in this QPCR. And then also Dr. Greg Klein and Mike Styling.